Welcome to bar 82 of my video season and he's Blender 2.7. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a pumpkin. Yes, this is a Halloween themed episode. So in this video, we'll be creating a pumpkin. And in the next tutorial, part 83, we're going to be creating a jack-o'-lantern out of that pumpkin. In other words, we'll be cutting out the face. We'll be making the pumpkin look thick. We'll be adding some special materials with subsurface scattering. We'll be adding lighting and doing the final render. But in this video, we're going to create a pumpkin that we'll be using for the next video uh, completely from scratch. And just to note that I recorded this video and the next video, part 82 and part 83, together in the same recording, so you might hear me refer to later in the video when I actually mean the next video. I've split this video in two so that it was not going to be too long. Of course, if you like this video or if you learned something, go ahead and click on that like button below this video on YouTube. And if you want to see more videos like this one in Butter and in Tech, click on that subscribe button as well. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'll click on my splash screen to get rid of it. And let's go ahead and zoom in on that default cube. And with it selected, I'm going to press X on my keyboard and get rid of it. I'll press Shift A on my keyboard and we're going to add a mesh. By the way, Shift A adds or brings up the add menu. We're going to add a mesh um, UV sphere, basically a ball, and we're going to make this into our pumpkin. So in this video, we're going to start from scratch. We're going to make the pumpkin. We're going to make it look good with materials, and then we'll go ahead and carve it into a jack-o'-lantern, and we'll make it have thickness as well. Let's go ahead and make this look like a pumpkin shape, though. So I'll press tab to go into edit mode, and I'm going to press A, and A will, of course, select or uh, deselect all, so I want nothing selected. And in vertice select mode, I'm going to go ahead and right click to select the top vertice. I'll orbit around and hold shift and right click to also select the bottom vertice. So I have both selected now with shift. And if I go ahead and press uh, S on my keyboard, that will scale. And it will scale the two vertices either uh, up and down or apart from each other or towards each other. But I'll press escape though. And I'm going to enable something called proportional editing. Proportional editing is down here. I actually have a video on proportional editing in this video series. I'll put a link to that video on the screen right now in case you haven't uh, ever used or you're not familiar with proportional editing. But proportional editing is basically a way of, if you have something selected like a vertice or an edge or a face, you can have uh, everything around it be influenced by what you're doing as well. So if you scale one selected face, you can scale all the faces around the selected face or vertice or edge. Uh, or if you grab something like a vertice in this case and you move it around, it'll sort of move everything else uh, nearby uh, with it. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on proportional editing down here. Uh, we'll enable it uh, with that one. And by the way, if you ever accidentally pressed O on your keyboard, O is the keyboard shortcut for uh, proportional editing. So now with proportional editing turned on, if I press Z to go into wireframe mode and I tap S on my keyboard, you'll notice a few things. First of all, I got a circle. Um, on my screen and I can scroll down and up to make that bigger or smaller and this is the circle of influence It has a fall off which means as you get uh, further out towards the edge of the circle It will uh, affect the amount of how much you're affecting the surrounding area uh, less and less So as you can see now if I tap S and then Z on my keyboard I'm scaling those two vertices together on the Z axis or apart and if I scale them towards each other, I'm kind of making a pumpkin shape. I'm making basically a squashed uh, ball. But if I scroll down to make my influence area smaller, by the way, that circle is the distance away from each point. It's not in the middle of the screen. Uh, so if I tap S and then I scroll up and down, you can see that you know now it's affecting it very little away from each uh, vertice. If I scroll up, it'll affect uh, a lot farther away from each vertice. So if I tap S and then Z and I make this a bit smaller, you can see that uh, I can affect what the shape is going to be when I scale uh, up and down, if I scroll up and down as well. So if I just kind of do that and go inwards, I'm going to get something that looks like the shape of a pumpkin. If you're not getting um, the shape that you want right away, of course, you can always, um, you know, try scaling apart um, with one size and then uh, try again, tap S and change the size and pull it in. I'm going to undo though because I actually got a shape that I quite like. I'm going to tap S, I'm going to make a smaller circle and I'm going to pull in a little bit. 
uh, and get a bigger one and just pull in a little bit more. Now, I don't think there's enough uh, detail on the top and bottom, especially the top of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard, Alt, and I'll right click on an edge between one of these two vertices that will select an edge uh, loop. An edge loop is a loop of connected edges. So again, if I hold Alt and right click on an edge, it'll select the edge loop. And I'm gonna bevel that edge. So I'll press Control B on my keyboard. Control B is bevel. And when you bevel, you split an edge into two. Uh, I just want more detail, so I have I want more edge loops so I can create more of a smooth flowing uh, surface. So I'll select this one as well, hold Alt, right click, and then Control B and I'm doing pretty good. Let's go ahead and select one of those. And in fact, I'll select that one and I'll double tap G on my keyboard. If I tap G, G, I can then uh, slide that edge loop, um, you know, outwards and inwards. So I'm gonna put it right in the middle. And now if I select that edge loop and I press G and then Z on my keyboard, I can kind of affect, you know, the, the, the shape of my, uh, uh, pumpkin, so you know, I'm pretty happy with that actually. I might select that one, try scaling it out, try making my portional editing circle bigger or smaller. Uh, let's see, I actually kind of like that. And don't worry if you're not totally happy with this because we're gonna make it really look like a pumpkin um, in just a few minutes time. Uh, in the meantime though, I'm gonna try grabbing just a few of these vertices and just I can, you know, just warp my pumpkin a little bit. So if I want to make one side a little bit flatter, you know, don't make it totally symmetrical. You might want to try playing how much and seeing how much you can make uh, it not symmetrical. Uh, but with that, I'm going to start making the ridges around the pumpkin. Uh, pumpkins have, you know, um, a part that sticks out, then a part that goes in, and part that sticks out, part that goes in, all the way around uh, ridges. So I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard, and I'm going to right click on one of these edges that goes from the North Pole to the South Pole. So I'll hold Alt and right click, and I want to select every alternate one. So I'm going to hold Alt and Shift now, and right click on that edge loop. Uh, and it'll connect uh, that up. So let's go ahead and keep holding Alt and Shift, and I'm gonna right click on each uh, or every other uh, edge loop. So right there, I'll zoom out a little bit, hold Alt and Shift, I'll just speed this up. It's important to note that if you change the number of segments or rings in your UV sphere, of course you can do that at the bottom of your tool shelf, but only when you first add your shape. So if I were to have added a new UV sphere to my scene, I could have changed the amount of uh, rings and segments uh, right away. If I had done that, I want to make sure that I'm keeping an even number of segments and rings uh, like it had by default. I think it had 32 or 36 by default. You need an even number. Uh, for both segments and rings for this to work properly, at least you should. So now I have all these alternate edge loops selected um, and I wanna scale them inward. So I'm gonna tap S on my keyboard. In fact, I'll press escape and I'm gonna turn off proportional editing. So I'll uh, disable it and I'll, now I'll tap S on my keyboard. And so I'm only scaling or affecting the vertices that I have selected. And I'm gonna scale these inwards a little bit. So I tap S, I'll go in a little bit. And I want to go in uh, even more, but I don't want to go any more uh, down or up. So I'm going to press S and then Shift Z on my keyboard, and that will let me scale only on the X and Y axes. It's not going to go up and down anymore. And I'll go just a little bit in further than I was before. So I think I was about there. So I'll go into about there. And I want to make these ridges a bit more substantial. So actually, I'm going to bevel them apart. I'm going to press Control B on my keyboard again with all these same um, edge loops, uh, inner ridges selected. And when I press Control B, it'll split them all into two. And we're going to make them just a little bit apart, just like that or so. And I'll click. So now we have these double ridges that are all kind of inset, a little bit down, a little bit up, but mostly from the left and right and front and back. So mostly on the Y and X axes. So now I want to select the outer ridges and work with them. So I'm actually going to go down to select uh, with everything still selected. I'll go to select and let's see if this works inverse. Uh, I think there's a bug in Blender. I, I discovered this as I was practicing for this video. Um, so if I, press, if I press Control Z now and go back, and I do this again, select 
inverse, it'll do it properly. Let me know in the comments below this video on YouTube if you had this problem as well, or if you select inverse, uh, in this case, if it selects everything, and if you undo and do it again, it works. Uh, you should be able to select the opposite of what you had selected, so that's what we're going for. With this current selection, the outer ridges, I'm gonna bevel these apart to kind of make flat sections um, that are on the outermost of the sides of the pumpkin, but I don't want to have any of this top section selected or the bottom section selected. So I'm going to press 7 on my numpad to go to the top view, and then I'll press 5 to go to the, the uh, orthographic view, and I'm going to use circle select. So I'll tap C on my keyboard. Circle select gives me a circle on my mouse, and I can select or deselect with this. If I left click and drag, I can select. If I push my mouse wheel down like a button, um, you can deselect. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put my mouse over the top and bottom. In fact, I might want to turn uh, this. I'll press escape. I'll turn this uh, limit selection divisible button. Uh, I want to make sure I can see the top and the bottom or, or both sides. So when it's light, you can. You can see the back side there. So I'll go back to my top view. I'll press C on my keyboard. I'll scroll so I can uh, just click once to deselect. Uh, everything on the top and bottom, uh, let's say the this kind of smaller ring here, not the very small one, and if I uh, click on my mouse wheel down like a button, so if I middle click down, it'll deselect the top and bottom, because again I'm looking through, I can see the back with limit selection divisible uh, turned off. So now I'll press escape. One of the downsides of using circle select is that you can't orbit your view. Again, if you go to top view and you press C, if you try to orbit, it won't work. In fact, it'll deselect what you have selected because that middle mouse button um, acts as deselect. So I'll press escape uh, just to break out of that. It's a kind of a funny tool. So I've got all these outer ridges selected. I'm gonna bevel them apart. So I'll press control B on my keyboard and move my mouse apart. And as you can see up there at the top, um, things are gonna get a little bit funny. So I'm gonna go only as far as I can. Maybe, uh, no, let's just go as far as we need. So I'm looking at the middle here and how far apart those two edges are getting. And I kind of like, um, let's say that, sure. In fact, I wanna make these stick out a little bit more. So I'll tap S and then Shift Z on my keyboard. To make them move out a little bit more and I'm pretty happy with that. Now if I press A it'll deselect all and I'll click on this limit selection divisible button and that will let me see my mesh. I kind of have an ugly mesh here. I have because I beveled out the outer ridges too far I have these overlapping sections and typically you would not want this because this is an ugly mesh. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this quite easily using the Sculpt tool. Now, I haven't made a video on the Sculpt tool yet, but basically we have Object Mode, we have Edit Mode, there's a Sculpt Mode, and if you go into Sculpt Mode, you can sculpt with a brush. Now, your brushes are over on your tool shelf, and by default, you get this Sculpt Draw button, or Brush, rather. We're not going to use that one. We're going to use instead. So I'll click on it. We're going to use Smooth. And so if I use the Smooth brush, and I'm gonna make my radius bigger, that's the brush size bigger. I'm just gonna to go to my top view and I'm gonna make the brush smaller a little bit. I'm gonna paint with smooth and as you can see, it's kind of just fixing those errors for me and it's smoothing it out. In fact, what I might do is I'll press Control Z to undo. I'm gonna turn down the strength, maybe 0.3. I'll try that again, I'll paint. And I believe when you're painting, um, it has symmetry turned on. So if you paint uh, on one side of the uh, Y, it'll paint on the other side of the Y. Uh, you can turn symmetry off, but I actually quite like it. So I can paint only in one corner now, I think. And uh, in fact, I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna turn that strength down a little bit to maybe 0.2. And I'm gonna just make sure all those, in fact, I'll undo a few times. Yeah, and I'm going to make sure that all the ridges kind of go away, at least they get fixed, but I don't want to get rid of them uh, entirely. Okay, so I'm just kind of just clicking, and I'm going to go back into object mode to see how we did. Let's go down to the bottom, I'll go back into sculpt mode, and I'm just going to smooth that out very quickly. Uh, not all the way, but just so that it's not going to have any bad artifacting or any too uh, messy geometry. 
Okay, let's go ahead and make a stem. So, in fact, before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, Sheeting Smooth. We're in object mode. And that's what our pumpkin will start to sort of look like. I'm gonna go up to my wrench tab in the properties window, and I'm gonna add a modifier. It's gonna be the subdivision surface modifier. This makes everything nice and smooth. And because we have those inner ridges, we have two edges that are very close to one another that forces the subsurf modifier to kind of keep uh, uh, edges <laughs> because usually it gets rid of edges and it makes them smooth so that's why we made those two beveled uh, edges uh, at every ridge point. I'm going to turn subdivisions up to uh, two and three. If you have a more powerful computer you might go up to three and four. I do so I'll leave it like that. Let's go ahead and add a stem. So I'll press tab to go into edit mode. I'll zoom in. Uh, while I'm in edit mode, I don't want to see the subsurf modifier. So I'm going to turn this that off with this button. And that way I won't see it when I'm in edit mode. And I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to right click on this edge loop. The one that looks sort of uh, wavy, but not uh, a perfect polygon and not anything too crazy. And I'm going to turn this into the base of the stem. I want to make it a little bit more jaggy though. So I'm going to go down to select and I'm going to select checker deselect. That will deselect every other vertice when I'm in vertice mode or vertice select mode. So select checker deselect. That will unselect every other one. And now I'll tap uh, S and scale those uh, inwards or outwards. I'll do inwards. So now I have kind of like a star or a sun. I'm going to hold, um, actually I'll go into face select mode, I'll select the interface, I'll press control plus on my number pad to go and select more, or you can go down to select and select uh, more or less, it's up to you. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to extrude it a bunch of times to make a stem, but I'm going to scale it down first, so I'll tap S on my keyboard, and then I'll tap S and then Z on my keyboard to make it more flat. And now if I tap E on my keyboard, it'll extrude, I'll click, I'll tap E, Z, zero, enter to make it totally flat, and I'll scale it down a little bit, and I'm gonna go for kind of like uh, a stem that goes in and stays flat, and then goes back out and kind of furls out at the end. So I'll press one, and then Z to go to my front view, and go to see-through mode. So now I can start extruding and scaling. Let's uh, extrude and scale. Uh, extrude, in fact, I won't go so far, and scale, extrude, and I'll go there, and maybe I'll do a, a loop cut, so control R, click, right click, and scale, and then I'll bevel that, control B, and B I'll uh, scroll up just once or twice so that I can get a few more edge loops uh, in there, and I'll go back into solid view, select that top face, select more or less more, and I'm gonna make it furl out at the end. So E, S, E, S, E, and then I'm gonna go uh, E, and then I'll tap S to scale that in, and I'll go down into itself. So I'm kind of creating a, a flat top with a hard edge. Maybe I'll do a loop cut, Control R, click, right click, and I'll scale those out um, so that now, you know, it kind of has a nice, uh, and to it. And I press tab, you'll notice that it has a very nice sort of ridge texture to it, which um, uh, pumpkin stems sort of do. They kind of have ridges that are kind of not that comfortable to hold. So it goes straight up and down, but I want it to curve. And there are many ways of making things curve. We're just going to do this in a very simple way. Um, I'm going to press tab to go back into edit mode. I'll select the top middle face. I'll press control plus to select more a few times. I'll select the entire top. And I'm going to go into my front view. I'll go into wireframe view. And I'm going to rotate around the 3D cursor. So I'm going to click maybe right about there. And I'm going to change my uh, pivot point. I believe that's what it's called. Yep, pivot point down here from median point, which is the default, to 3D cursor. So now if I tap S on my keyboard, you can see that I'm rotating around wherever. I'll press Control Z wherever that um, 3D cursor is. But of course, I'm going to use proportional editing. So I'll turn proportional editing uh, enabled. In fact, I'm going to use connected. And I'll tap S on my keyboard. I'm going to scroll. And actually it wasn't S, it was R that I wanted. So I'll tap R. And as you can see, I can kind of make it look start to look bent. Maybe I can even press G 
and then maybe R, and I can try experimenting and seeing what I want. I have to do a little bit of manual editing here, but let's go ahead and put our 3D cursor right about there. I'll go to my top view, and I'm gonna rotate that around. In fact, I'm gonna rotate it around the middle there so I can kind of make it bent like that. And as you can see, we have a sort of a bent. Um, in fact, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger, or I could press Control plus to select more of it. And so now I can make it curl around. I'll go to my top view again, and let's move it a little bit, uh, just so it looks a little bit crazy. Sure, let's in fact press Control plus maybe once more. Uh, it's looking pretty good. I might wanna add a loop cut and kind of fix this area. It looks a little bit too sheared for me. So I'll press uh, Escape uh, or A to deselect all. I'll press Control R, click, and that way I can just, uh, I'll turn off uh, or what I'll do is I'll tap uh, S and then scroll down and then R and I'm gonna rotate around the median point so that it kind of doesn't look so sheared and I'll select that uh, edge loop and I'll tap R. In fact, I'll turn off proportional editing and then I'll move that around just so it looks a little bit more smooth. And of course we will have, or we do have at this point, uh, I'm not sure, um, subdivision surface so it will look smooth uh, no matter what we do really. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, looking to off, I'll press tab to go back into object mode. And as you can see, because now we can, can again see uh, the subsurf modifier, uh, it does look smooth no matter what. And you know what? Uh, the stems of pumpkins do look crazy anyway, so I'm pretty happy with our result. Make sure that you do turn your pivot point back to median point uh, when you're finished with this so that you can work with things as you normally would and your gizmo will be where you expect it to be in the middle of your object or in the median point of your selection. So I've got something that looks sort of like like a pumpkin. Let's go ahead and save this. Uh, don't worry, we're gonna make it look even more realistic with a deform modifier, but let's go ahead and save this file and save as. I'm gonna save this to my desktop. We're gonna call this b 27 82 one Let's go ahead and click on save as Blender file and let's keep going. I'm gonna make my pumpkin look bumpy because pumpkins are not perfectly smooth. They have sort of a randomness to them that I wanna still add. And they have a very fine sort of bumpiness to them. Um, and they might be a bit more random than we have right now. So I'm gonna add a, another modifier. It's gonna be called, or it's under the section called deform. So under the wrench tab, I'll select add modifier and it's under the deform section and it's called displace. We're gonna add this displace uh, modifier to the modifier stack. So I selected it and when it adds this modifier to the stack, it adds it below the subsurf modifier. So it's down here and subsurf is right here. And that means that because Blender applies modifiers from the top down, it's really applying it after the subsurf modifier. So first it takes our model and makes it smooth with the subsurf modifier, and then it will use the displace modifier to do whatever it does. In this case, it messed up our model quite a bit. It kind of ruined it, but because modifiers are um, editable, they're non-destructive, I can turn them off and turn them on. We're actually gonna use this modifier to apply a bump uh, texture. So uh, in the options here, I'm gonna click on texture new, and we're gonna name this texture. I'm gonna call it bumpy pumpkin. Sure, I'll press enter. I don't care about capitalization there. And uh, if I press this button over here, it's gonna switch me over to this tab so I can click it. And as you can see, it just jumped me over there and it selected the right uh, texture in here. Of course, it probably would have anyways. And by default, a texture tries to use an image or movie that doesn't exist yet, so it uses black. Well, we don't want to use an image, we wanna use a cloud material. So I'm gonna change image or movie to cloud, which is, or clouds, which is right there. And these are sort of Blender's generated clouds. And you can select different kinds of clouds. You can select Blender Original Clouds or Perlin, and you can see what those cloud images look like. You can select Voronoi, uh, which are more like crackles, and there's different versions of Voronoi. Uh, there's ones that are very, you know, hard and look like kind of cracked sand in the, in the desert. In this case, we're going to use a softer one, either Blender Original or Original uh, Perlin 
or improved Perlin. It's really up to you, but we're going to turn this way down. It's way too strong um, and it's way too uh, not detailed. I was going to say too big, but it's not. It's not detailed enough. So I'm going to turn up depth and then we'll add smaller details and we'll turn it up to five. My computer can handle this um, and you might be a little bit cautious. Maybe you'll save before you try turning this up. And I'm going to turn the effect down, and that's not done here. Right here, we're just generating an image. We're going to turn the effect of the deformation down in our displacement modifier settings. We have our strength turned up to one. I'm going to turn it down. Uh, I'll just click until it goes down. And as you can see, at 0.1, it's looking pretty good, at least on the pumpkin. Of course, I might turn this down to 0.05, and I'll press Enter. And as you can see, looking pretty good to me if I turn my subdivisions view up to four and as you can see now we can see more of the detail uh, we got this fine bumpiness which you can only see uh, if your subsurf modifier is turned up high enough of course the stem does not look great and in fact because we're going to be adding a different material to the stem we might as well detach it. If you look at most pumpkins and the way the stem looks when it uh, meets the pumpkin, it actually does look quite separate. So I'm gonna go ahead and press tab to go into edit mode. And I actually wanna create more of a lip on the bottom of the stem. So I'm gonna go ahead and press control R on my keyboard to make a loop cut and I'll click. I'll move it to right about there. I'll do the same thing again, control R and click. And I'm gonna hold alt and right click on that middle edge loop and I'll tap S to scale it out. Uh, so we'll have sort of a, um, a lip that goes under and I'll select the bottom one, Alt and right click, and I'll tap S and I'll move it straight down. And I'm gonna take that middle one and I'll bevel it, Control B and all right, there's fine. And I'll make one more loop cut just so we get a really nice tight sort of a, uh, a lip there at the bottom of the stem. And I press tab to go back into object mode. You can see what that looks like. It looks like a separate object now, and that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna press tab again to go back into edit mode. I'm gonna select that end face. I'm gonna press control plus on my numpad a bunch of times. Control plus on your number pad will uh, select more, of course. And I'm gonna keep pressing it until I get the entire stem. So right till there, I have it all. And with that selected, I'll press P on my keyboard. P, when you're in edit mode, will separate uh, or bring up the separate menu. I'll select selection. And so now the stem is a separate object and I'm still in the edit mode of the pumpkin. What I'll do is I'll press tab to go back into object mode. I'm gonna select the stem and I'm going to change the bumpy pumpkin texture to a new version so we can edit it to make it look like how we want it to look for the stem. So I'm gonna press this little plus because we don't wanna edit bumpy pumpkin, we wanna edit bumpy stem. So I'm gonna press plus, that will make a copy of that texture. I'll rename it bumpy stem. And here I'm gonna change the size of this clouds material. It's the improved pulling material. Uh, we're gonna change the size from 0 0.25 to 0 0.05. That's gonna make a very, very small, very, very fine uh, cloud. So I'll press enter. And as you can see, it's gotten a lot smaller. In fact, I think I even want smaller, 0 0.02, and I'll press enter. What I'm looking for is to create a very fine set of bumps. I'm gonna try 0 0.01 even. Uh, again, these um, handles on pumpkins are very uh, rough and not very easy to hold. They're a little bit uh, not pleasant to carry a, a very heavy pumpkin with. Of course, this looks way too much though, so I'm gonna turn the effect down uh, under this, the displacement modifier options. I'm going to change the strength down to 0.01 and as you can see we have a bumpy looking stem it looks a little bit different than the bumpiness of the pumpkin which is great let's go ahead and add some materials now so I'm going to select the actual pumpkin I have a timeline window down here I'm going to make it taller because we're going to make this window into a node editor window so I'll change the window down here to node editor of course we're using the cycles render engine so up here and don't forget this we're going to change the render engine to cycles render and so now we can actually uh, add cycles materials and cycles lighting uh, don't forget that 
that step. Under the Materials tab, with the pumpkin selected, we're going to add a new material. Of course, when you add a new material, you get a basic diffuse material with a material output node. We're not going to use this diffuse node, though, so I'm going to press X on my keyboard. Instead, I'm going to press Shift A on my keyboard. We're going to add a, a shader. It's going to be a subdivision scattering shader. What this will do is it'll allow me to kind of fake um, how skin or um, fruit or vegetables in this case uh, skin acts uh, in terms of lighting and how light bounces inside of the object. Um, these objects are not perfectly hard so light will actually bounce and travel through uh, fruit and vegetable skins and human skins as well. So I'm going to connect that up to the surface material output and I'm going to change my viewport shading from solid to material and I'm going to change my color of course from white to uh, orange. Now the magic of this subdivision surface scattering uh, shader is that I can change the scale. And so I'm going to change my viewport again to rendered. And do I have a light? Yes I do, but the light is kind of uh, cruddy because it's a, a point lamp. So I'm going to select the lamp up here um, and I'm going to change it to a area lamp. And I'm going to click on use nodes and I'm going to change the lamp up to maybe 500 and I'll press enter. So what the subsurface scattering uh, material does is if you turn the scale up, in fact, I'm going to add a ground as well. I'm going to press shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to add a mesh plane. I'll tap S to scale that up and I'll tap G and then Z to move that straight down. Um, if you let this render out a little bit in your preview, you'll see that this looks really quite uh, soft. You can't see the definition of the ridges anymore and that's because our scale is set very high. It's set to 5.7. If I turn this down to let's say 0.2 and I press enter, you'll see that the surface changes quite a bit because the scale, we're basically telling uh, this pumpkin not to be the size of a gummy bear. Uh, which would have a lot of light passing through it, we're telling it to be much more along the lines of its own scale, much, much bigger. So the smaller this number is, the bigger your object is, and the less light that's being passed through and bouncing around inside your object. If you turn this way up to something like 10, it's going to act like a very, very small object where light can easily, easily pass through it. This is not going to be our full material though, of course. We're going to go ahead and add a mix shader. So I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. It's going to be a shader, mix shader. I'll connect that into that noodle. I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. We're going to add a glossy shader as well. So shader and glossy. I'll put that right up there and I'll connect these up together. Um, we're going to add a Fresnel. We're not done. We might switch these around. We're going to add a Fresnel node. And so what a Fresnel node does, um, I'll press Shift A on my keyboard and we're going to bring in an, an input Fresnel. Uh, it's not pronounced Fresnel, it's Fresnel. What this will do is it'll kind of uh, mimic the way that uh, reflection works in the real world. We're kind of getting into the territory of uh, physical based uh, rendering or materials where um, light behaves correctly. Basically, if you have something that's reflective, it's not going to be evenly reflective, uh, basically from where you're looking at it. In other words, uh, at a on a surface that's directly facing you, it's not going to look the same in terms of its reflectivity um, uh, compared to a surface that's facing a little bit um, uh, away from you or at 90 degrees from what you're looking at, so a side surface. This will kind of correct that, so I'm going to plug this into the factor and do I have it uh, set to the right uh, input? If I switch these around, yeah, I don't want that, so I'll switch those around and switch these around so my subsurf scattering is above the glossy material. And so now I might want to play with the amount of roughness of glossiness. So if I turn this down, it looks like a very kind of shiny pumpkin. Uh, if I turn this roughness up, it'll look more like a real pumpkin. I'm going to go ahead and change my uh, compute device. It's to my CPU right now. I'm going to change it to my GPU, my graphics card, because uh, I have an NVIDIA-based graphics card uh, in my computer. And that'll help uh, let me speed this up in this video. And I'm going to change my sampling down from 128 to, let's say, 50. And I'm going to change my performance down here. Because I have a graphics card, I'm going to change my tile size up to 256 by 256. So now, uh, if I orbit, it'll update much, much quicker for me. Let's go ahead and add a material to my stem as well. So I'll select the stem. 
Uh, I'm going to add uh, the same material again, but I'm going to make a copy of it with this plus. I'm going to make it uh, have a brown material, so I'll just make it a dark uh, orange, kind of like that. And it's too orangey right now, so I'm going to make it more of a yellowy uh, brown and not as saturated. That looks pretty good to me. And let's go ahead and set up some lighting in this scene. So I'm going to turn my world down. It's a gray world right now, but of course this gray uh, projects light onto your scene. I don't want any light. This is going to be a dark kind of a spooky scene. And let's go ahead and select my lamp. And my lamp is very, very bright right now. So I'll turn it down to maybe 100. And I'm going to make it in area lamp, but I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. We're gonna make it a one by one lamp. And if I split this window into two, you can see I have one rendered one now, uh, and I have one where I can actually see my light. And I'm gonna move my lamp um, down to beside. I'll press Alt-R to clear its rotation. I'll go to my top view, I'll put it right beside the pumpkin. And in fact, I'll put it right behind the pumpkin. Go to my side view and rotate it so it's going to point directly behind the pumpkin. And I'm going to move my camera. So I'm going to go through my camera view with the zero key. And I'm going to select my pumpkin. And I'm going to turn on lock camera to view, which will let me orbit through my camera and actually change my camera's view just by orbiting through it um, instead of having to actually select my camera uh, outside and have to, having to move it uh, kind of one by or step by step this is a much easier way of doing it and so now what i'm going to do is kind of orbit around until i like the uh, position of it and of course i can select the pumpkin and tap r and then z to rotate it until i like the the angle that i see it at i kind of like that of course i didn't rotate the stem so i can do that too i can select the stem i'm working very high poly here with that subsurf modifier so everything's a little bit slow i'll tap r and then z to rotate it around and if i look through my camera um that's my camera there i've moved my camera now there we go i quite like that it's looking pretty good uh, I think my setting for my subsurf gathering is way too uh, high though because it looks like my pumpkin is very, very small. So if I go through my camera, you can see it kind of glows because there's a light behind it. So I'm going to select my pumpkin and I'm going to change the scale. Uh, it's very, very high. I'm going to change it down to 0 0.1 and press enter. So now we're not getting a lot of light, but I'm going to duplicate my light. Uh, so I have one lamp here. I'll press shift D on my keyboard. I'll move this one over here. Uh, I don't want them all to be very bright though. I'm going to make sure it's about at the right height. Uh, this one's going to be very dull. It's going to be at 20. And I'm going to duplicate it from the top view. Shift D. I'll put it over here. R and rotate it. Something like that. So we get some nice side lighting. I'm going to change the colors of my lights. This backlight is going to be uh, greeny blue. And let's pick a bluish color, but not too much. And then these other ones can be uh, different colors. I might pick a pinky color and I might pick a greeny color and not so much though, just a little bit of these colors. So I'll select this one and turn it down just a little bit, little bit pink. And this ground's gonna have a material on it as well, but it's gonna be a reflective material. So I'm gonna add a material to that. New, I'm gonna make uh, it not be a diffuse shader, but I'll have it be a glossy shader. And I'm gonna turn the roughness up a little bit. And we're gonna add a mix shader, add uh, shader mix. And I'm gonna add a diffuse shader as well. Shader, shift A uh, and diffuse. And so now we can have just sort of a semi glossy uh, material. But let's go ahead and, and add that input for now to make that material look more realistic. There we go. Okay, so we have a scene that looks pretty good and I'm gonna save it. Uh, so I'll press Control S and then click. And now I'm gonna save a copy because with this pumpkin, uh, we're gonna start carving, but I might wanna go back to my original pumpkin and carve a different face if I feel like I'm in the mood. So I'm gonna click Save and then File, Save As. And we're working on version 001. I'm gonna save this with this plus. Now is 002 and I'll click on Save Blender File. 
All right, so we're gonna pause the video right here and we're gonna call this the end of tutorial number 82 in this video series. We finished modeling and adding materials and lighting and setting up the scene for the pumpkin. In the next video, in part 83, we'll start carving the pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern. We'll make the thickness of the pumpkin look right. We'll add lighting to the scene and we're gonna continue using that subsurface scattering material in order to make the thickness of the pumpkin look the right material so light shines through it really, really nicely. So that will be it for this video. Again, if you like this video or if you learned something, go ahead and click on that like button below. And if you want to see more videos like this one in Butter and Tech, click on that subscribe button as well. Of course, check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg. If you end up finishing the pumpkin and or the jack-o'-lantern, I'd love to see you post photos of them there on my Facebook wall. But again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.